Hi. Hello. Morning. Thanks for joining. Very well on yourself. I'm well, thanks. I'm new, uh, new technology for me, so I'm uh, making my way through it. Yeah, I'm. I'm just thankful that it works because yeah. uh, <laughs> the, the 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 instructions in the uh, in the in the um, e- in the meeting invite were worked perfectly. So yeah, it did. Good. It did. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I just got an email from Lernick saying that she doesn't have clear I'm just gonna tell her to dial into this number. Let's see if I can What time zone are you folks? If I may ask. I'm on the East Coast in the US. So I'm uh what about you? Uh San Jose, California. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Very good morning. Yeah. And Gary, for the for the event itself, are we going to use the same process to log in and join the same same exact process? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I basically copied and pasted the process from the the guidance that um, that Frank had sent us all. Okay. Sure. So and we have Mike, Ravi, and Adam, uh, and then we have there are only there are three other people. There's Lernik Asai, there's Shuven Dushan, and there's Adrian Lichtenberg. Are the other three um, part? So what I wanted to do in the session today? Oh, there's Lernik. Okay, so good, not bad, good team. <laughs> So I, I've been involved with – this is my fourth year of doing things on, with Horasis. And so um, I, I participated in the October session that was also virtual, and that was – ah, didn't really uh, – maybe it, it didn't really meet my expectations. But anyway, we'll see if we can do better this year. Okay, I'm just going to give – Good morning, everyone. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry for, for the delay. That's okay. I'm glad you got the, uh, once I sent you that email, you were able to, to get in. So I, I'm, I'm going to get underway. Um, and I sent them in, I sent all the, a repeat to Shivendo this morning um, about joining. So hopefully he's able to join as well. Um, so thanks all for, for joining. Uh, this is the session Future of Obamacare, which is be part of the, the Horasis meeting, which is happening next week. I'm Gary Phillips. I'm the moderator for the session. As I said, uh, this is my fourth year in, in, in speaking at. First year that I'm, I'm, I'm the moderator rather than being a participant on the panel. Does that mean you're being uh, promoted or demoted by being a moderator now? Uh, I think what happened was he, he was struggling to find anyone to do it. <laughs> and since I, I kept coming back for more, he it was by default. <laughs> it was rather, yeah, probably more of a demotion. So congratulations to, to you all. Um, so so I, I'm not, I don't want us to go that, through. This is making through, me feel really good, matter of fact. <laughs> I don't want to go through, a, 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 you know, too much on, on you know, any one of us in particular. I'd rather focus on the context. We'll have a chance to introduce ourselves. Plus, you know, there, you can always look each other up on LinkedIn and such. But the short of it is um, I've been in healthcare for 30 years. I trained as a physician first, practiced general medicine for a number of years, and then left wow. practice to enter industry where I work. connected with me. Um, so I ran the Davos meeting. I've been to Davos four times. So I've seen the goods and the bads of, of, uh, of panels from my experience, both at serving in them as well as running them, uh, you know, at, at the forum. So hi, Adrian. How are you? Hey, nice to meet you. Sorry. It's okay. I was That's in 
in my own meeting for a while. Sorry. That's, that's okay. So if we have, I think we have everybody, but Shuvendu is the last uh, person. I was just, I was just saying that, um, that uh, this, I, I, I'm excited about the session. Uh, I, I know a little bit about each one of you from at least from the, the background of, of what you do. And so I think we have a very good mix of both um, area, let's say, uh, uh, functional focus as well as industrial representation from, from healthcare. And so what I'm going to do is uh, go through kind of each one of y'all call on you and then, you know, what, what you've, if you've given me some, an area where you would like to speak, I'll, I'll say that, but I'll, t I'll talk about kind of why I want to go at least in this initial direction. So I want to start with Adam. The reason being that, you know, you're the only person who does this for a living <laughs> really, in terms of, in terms of, you know, thinking about what Obamacare's, what the Affordable Care Act is going to be. So, so Adam is the head of Sanofi Genzymes U.S. Corporate Affairs. And so if there's anybody in our panel who's an expert on things like Obamacare, where it's going, where it's been and how to influence it, I think you're the guy. Plus you're the most responsive of any of the people I email. You're the one pushing me to get stuff done. So I like that. So because of that, we'll start with you. So Adam, you said that you could cover why Trump, Trump tried to repeal ACA, what to expect from Biden, and, and how will vested interests uh, uh, influence the ongoing discussion. I think, you know, given the size of Sanofi um, <laughs> and, 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 you know, your point of view on that, maybe you want to kick off with, you know, who you are and, and what you think you can, how you can speak to some of the issues around the future of Obamacare. Um, sh sure. So, um, do you, I guess a couple questions. Do you, I think I'd say, I, I, my recollection is, um, that I, I could say I could speak to all three of those, but I don't know that you want me to speak to all three of those. Um, I don't know if you want others to speak to some of them or, you know, I'm perhaps, happy to... yeah. So, so as I, I wrote to the, the email to the group, the way I want to run this is I'll do a very short intro. I don't want to do much time at all because it's my, it's not my panel. I I'm supposed to facilitate it, but not speak really. So my job is to make you all shine if I can and to satisfy the audience. So um, I'll, I'll take less fewer than five minutes at the beginning and then we'll move over to each one of you with prepared remarks on the order of five minutes each. Um, if it's fewer, not a big deal because I think as I said the value in having run panels and been part of panels and where it never happens, right? It never gets to this is to allow the audience to ask questions but, but be, you know and if they don't have questions to allow interaction between the six of you, because, you know, I think the six of you playing off each other is where a lot of the fun is um, and, and also builds the, the sense of community within the panel. So if you could start off with why, why did the last administration try to repeal ACA? And then what, what do you think is going to, we can see how it will Biden advance, you know, his, in his act two now in the administration, advance what he started under Obama. That would be a great way to kick off. Um, do you want me to do you want me to do that now, or do you want me to just know that that's Maybe what I'm going to do? Give, you know, I, I think if you just give like a, a two second, you know, sure. of, of what what are your thoughts on those topics? Yeah, I think um, you know the the shortest answer to kind of why did Trump try to repeal Obamacare is pure politics. Um, the you know the the party opposed Obamacare when it was enacted. Um, not a single Republican voted for it, and and almost immediately started campaigning against it um, from from uh, the time that it. That it was signed into law. Um, I think there were a variety of kind of political calculations that were made going back um, ten years ago uh, to, to to decide that's going to be how we defeat Democrats. I actually think it largely worked in the midterm elections following the enactment of Obamacare. A lot of Democrats lost. Republicans took control of the Congress. Um, but over time, and particularly once it was implemented, many aspects of it became very, very popular. And even upon enactment, um, the core pieces of Obamacare pulled very, very highly and very well, very popular. Um, but the bill itself, um, I, I think the Republicans did a better job branding it um, and, and on the messaging around it and could pick one or two bad things about it as kind of why it's bad. But, you know, Incredibly popular. And so, you know, I, I think it was a political miscalculation. Um, and I think this kind of played itself out in, in the, the Trump midterms, where trying to repeal it um, time and again, and I think at the beginning of the process, when, when 
Obama was still president, it was largely a political exercise where Republicans would repeal it, knowing full well it, the, the the effort to repeal wouldn't wouldn't be enacted. Um, and then when President Trump took over, he he carried that forward and I think made a political miscalculation. And and, and then Democrats took the House back and and made made up made progress in the Senate um, in, in the in his midterm election. So, you know, here here we are um, ten years later, and and uh, I think. Um, Obamacare is here to stay, um, and and I think Biden and I'm going to stop talking so others can can have a chance. But I think you know Biden and his kind of act too is going to focus on strengthening it. And and where did um, where did Trump through through regulatory and executive authority um, weaken it in his opinion? Um, and how can he uh, either reverse those things, which he's largely already done through executive order, um, and try to strengthen it as he sees it, but then also build on it. Um, to, to, you know, almost from the day it passed, it was acknowledged by everybody, particularly those that supported it, that it was an imperfect law and needed to be, um, needed to be updated. And, and that's typical for almost any big bill that passes. Um, and, you know, there's always updates, there's always kind of perfecting um, legislation. Uh, but because of how politicized Obamacare was, that was really never possible. Um, and whether that's possible legislatively now, um, you know, I think is still an open question. Uh, I think um, the the president will certainly um, and has already started to strengthen it through regulation and executive authority. The areas that he's talked about and campaigned on further strengthening it, I think we'll have to wait and see um, whether that's feasible given the narrow majority in the House and the Senate. Great. Thank, thanks. Good, good start. Um, so and if, and if there, and I'm sorry. If there are parts of that that you think I should focus on less or more, I'm happy to kind of spend more time on either side of no, that. No, because I think what we're going to do is come back and we're going to deepen some of the pieces, right? So so the opening comments are just to open up the thinking around, you know, of the topic. And, and I think where you get the value is then coming back and deepening. In particular, you know, as, as we get, you know, I think about having been in pharmaceuticals most of my career um, and knowing the Democrat democratic, you know, agenda item of, of somehow, you know, constraining drug costs and such. It will be interesting for me to come back to. So what will this, you know, I think about Sanofi Genzyme, it's part of your job is trying to make sure that if that, if, if there is some sort of, uh, you know, Medicare negotiating drug prices or government having some cost, you know, price control, how are you going to affect that? So vested interests, Coming back to that, I'd like to I'd like to do that at some point if we get there in this session. Sure. I'll, so I'll limit my, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was no. going to say I'll, I'll limit my opening comments just as probably not word for word, but along those lines, and then we can come back to any other topic. That sounds good. Good. Thanks. So then what I'll what I'll probably do then is move on to Sh Shivendu, who's not on the call. Uh, Shivendu was added to the to the agenda to the agenda I think just last week. Um, he is the vice chair of the Jersey Shore University Medical Center. And so I, I want to talk a little bit about, from his perspective, um, from a healthcare systems and provider, right? Because now he's probably the only one who's a pure provider from all the people on the panel, talking a little bit about what's worked and what hasn't in Obamacare from a provider standpoint, I think, because he said that he could uh, speak to those things and, and what's on the agenda after COVID. So we won't go through Shivendu since he's not here. Um, now what I have is I have... Three people, so Lernick, Ravi, and Adrian, who are all at the interface of technology and health. Okay, and so what I'm trying to do is, you know, a lot of the solution to everything in healthcare all has to do with data <laughs> and leveraging technology. So whenever I've gone to any panel, there always has to be a whole section on data, data, you know, interoperability, data protection and use of technology and, and harnessing, right? Because healthcare has been behind the curve when it comes to that. So I want to touch on that, but I'm just trying to figure out the right sequence. Mm -hmm. uh, be, so, so Lernick is the Associate Director of Digital Innovation Solutions at Memorial Sloan Kettering. Um, and so we can may, maybe as we, I'm trying to tease apart how do we address yeah. the technology piece. And then we have Ravi, who's the founder and CEO of Sequinto, which is a, a Sequino, I'm sorry, which is a telehealth company. Um, and then Adrian is the founder and chairman of Spark Health, which is into big data and AI innovation. And so, yeah, so, so maybe, maybe I say something before. Sure. So I've lived most of my life in the U.S. Yeah? And uh, the last job in the U.S. I had, I was managing director of the AMA in charge of innovations. 
Okay. Uh-huh. So, so that is a little bit my background there. But so I'm the last three years, I'm, uh, I roughly went back to Europe. Okay. So I'm living in the Netherlands. Yeah? Right. And I, I think the biggest issue that I really see with the healthcare issue there, I think that the American healthcare system is so freaking expensive. Yeah. That is roughly four or five times more expensive, at least, than in Europe. Yeah. And uh, if I compare the quality, yeah, the quality is, you know, yeah, more or less the same, except, of course, you know, from I had Stanford, but I get a bill of $10,000 if I just go to the uh, yeah, ECU. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, yeah, so this completely, so I think there are two things that needs to happen. Yeah. If Obamacare wants to be successful, and just bring it back to Obamacare, we have to find a way to really unlodge the vested interest. Yeah. Why are everybody in healthcare making so much more money than they make in Europe? I think that's a fundamental problem. Yeah. And I think the other fundamental problem is, is as a result of that, yeah, uh, technology get only sparsely introduced and not broadly. So I've been also active in China and India. Yeah. And in China and India, I think that, that you know, they're completely different, yeah. But you know, for example, there we use AI technology to be a first-line doctor. Yeah. So one doctor has ten times as much patients as a doctor in Europe. Yeah. And the quality is not that much different, and not so much different than in the US from the first-line part. Roughly, the right. anticipation what's happening. Yeah. So, so I think I think the US, if they really want to get back. Yeah, and I think healthcare is one of the most important ones. Yeah, they have to get back in reducing the costs significantly, removing the vested interest. Secondly, apply you know, really using technology all over the place. Yeah, yeah, and the last one is really another one that is healthcare is really a combination of three things, and I think the Corona uh, crisis, COVID crisis, have really showed that healthcare is physical healthcare, mental healthcare, and food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've been involved in, in roughly the biggest trials in uh, India yeah, and see the practice. And it came very simple. People that are vegetarian yeah, had roughly a 1 on 10 chance to get COVID just because they have a better immune system. I think so. So, so what we're seeing is, 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 I think, you know, if we don't attract those three yeah, in the equal winner, we, you know, we always have the inequity about what I call, you know, the people that have money in the U.S. They can eat better food than the people that don't have money that have a junk food. What I call it, yeah, yeah. And also the mental health part of because you know, from if I'm poor, I'm sitting in a little room with COVID. Yeah, it makes me crazy. My kids run around to think like if I'm wealthy, you know, I have a nice estate. You know, I can go outside. Life doesn't change that much. Yeah. So, so, so I, I think the, the whole system, yeah, will it really be? The, so, for me, Obamacare, yeah, in order to be better, yeah, they have to really changing those fundamental things, yeah, and that's the only way that healthcare will be, you know, will be there in the U.S. And you know, to be completely clear about this, we see it all over the world. The quality of food is going down significantly worldwide, yeah. Yeah, uh, mental health is going up, crises is more and more. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and so if we don't, you know, if we don't do anything there, you know, the whole system gets overloaded, gets, you know, we go completely the wrong direction if we don't steer it right. So that is my my roughly point, and I think, you know, it's good. So I think I think we just found a bridge. So thank you for yeah. that, Adrian. Uh, so I think we just went from Adam to Shavindu. And then I think probably it makes sense for Adrian because what he's, he's going to bring in is a multinational uh, point of view. And actually, I, I've, I've lived in Switzerland, UK and the US uh, and made similar observations, and especially when, you know, having lived in Switzerland for probably 10 years. Um, and I see I pay less in Switzerland than I do in the United States, although it's second in the world per capita in terms of expenditures. But what I get for it is so much more. In right. terms of the quality, so um, so maybe then it makes sense to go to Lernick, just because again, you know, coming from a Sloan Kettering as a healthcare 
you know, pr provider, you know, a major uh, cancer center, but also, you know, given that you have a, a technology twist, it's maybe a, a good bridge than Dodo Ravi, if, if that's okay. Yeah. Sure. yeah, sure. I was thinking also my point would be um, relevant to go after Sh Shavi, you said, um, our other partner that is not on the call, because my... Yes, Randu. Um, so my my point is more combination of technology and um, an integration into uh, healthcare systems and hospital systems. Uh, from Obamacare is mostly around ACA's uh, bundles payment. So main two points that um, I would like to bring up is saving costs and improving quality of care through bundles payment, which was a big uh, key part of the uh, ACA. Mm -hmm. um, I've been directly involved with those efforts with uh, multiple hospitals, but I think the point that is very important there is I observe the the design of the solutions, um, technology solutions, how much helped to improve um bundles payment design and, implica uh, and uh, implementation in different hospital and healthcare systems. Uh, the outcomes of bundles payments and uh, improved care quality across the board has improved, generally speaking, with uh, general metrics, has improved dramatically, specifically, as we know, bundles payment was uh, rolled out for hip and knee replacement, orthopedic mm -hmm. surgery for uh, senior um, citizens. So we had dramatic impact, positive impact on their life quality um, by implementing um, bundles payment. Uh, Change, it's changing approach in terms of uh, emphasizing quality as it drives to, uh, to reduce costs. Um, and the role of the technology has been very clear there because the solutions that you come up to bring that whole patient journey into one journey so you can follow and track the metrics that you're calling quality metrics has been tremendous. I mean, the apps that we have uh, designed, the uh, uh, implementation that within the EHR we tweaked to capture those quality metrics, those have been playing very um, cornerstone roles in terms of um, improving truly the quality um, and reducing costs. I think that's one of the positive incentives that we had from ACA, at least in my practice, that I wanted to sort of bridge the practical practice and technology, sort of how they help each other and merge to improve quality of care, which is one of the three um, angles of the healthcare uh, improvement. Yep. It costs. Yep. All right, great. Thank, thank you, Lernick, for that. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, what I'll do is after our session, I'll kind of think this all through and then come out with my proposed uh, run of show. And so I'll, because I think both either Adrian or Lernick as number three could probably be a good bridge. Mm -hmm. And then so, so Ravi, we're getting towards the, the tail end. So uh, I know Ravi has been involved in telehealth. So maybe you can play on a bit of what you've heard among the panel so far and think about what, what you would like to contribute in this thinking around Obamacare. Sure. Um, I've been in uh, telemedicine and telehealth for more than 16 years with NASA being my springboard. Uh, NASA conceived telemedicine in 1970 and they have a medical innovation technology program called Meditac that's hosted at the Virginia Commonwealth University. Yeah. So very quickly, we developed an algorithm that could transmit information real time over hybrid networks. And we came under a clinical trial and the anesthesiologist was able to connect into a mobile surgical unit in Ecuador where a person was undergoing a gallbladder operation and she was able to save the life of that person, obviously by arresting the flow of anesthesia with SATCOM. And what she was able to observe with our algorithm was a three lead ECG blood pressure and temperature. So that's been my journey. So fast forward, what I see here is, you know, in 2020, our annual spend in healthcare has crossed $4 trillion. We are about a 340 million people in the country. It can be $15,000 annual consumption per capita, which is ostentatious. So given that, given Obamacare, Obamacare started with all the right concepts 
But where I see this falling is it's like buying liability insurance for your car. You know, when I was going to school in Philly, I couldn't afford I was below 21 and, you know, I had to pay $2,500 for my car insurance. Where do I go? Cross the river, went to Camden and got liability insurance for 350 bucks. So what is it that is available to what, uh, you know, both Adrian uh, specifically was mentioning and to what Adam kind of started from the regulation standpoint and what we need to do, so to speak. If I piece this together, digital health becomes very important given the fact where we're. Three main things. How can we avoid unnecessary emergency visits, uh, unnecessary readmissions, uh, unnecessary prescription drugs? Now, given the fact that there's a supply demand crunch, the supply demand is lopsided, you know, and the country was divided into regional healthcare information organization, which was a fantastic idea, you know. You know, the politics gone into, got, went into play and, you know, kind of muddled the water, so to speak. So given what we have, and in my journey, for example, when we started a telemedicine program in rural Nevada, two-bit emergency clinics in Elko and Battle Mountain, if I go to Elko, there is no public transport. I have to go to a bike store, rent a bicycle, and bike up to the hospital. So, you know, in the 05, 06 time frame when we started a pilot, they were unloading uh, half a million dollars on airlifts every year, just a two-bit emergency clinic. Right. And each airlift was costing. They were averaging an airlift a month, each airlift costing about thirty five, forty thousand dollars because somebody walks into a clinic. They got chest pain. There's no way to know whether it is really a situation or it is just gastritis, as an example. So common sense plays a major role. So, you know, I'm not trying to kind of promote my company or anything. By the way, I'm very happy to say that uh, my telehealth platform was FDA approved and cleared yesterday. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it has been fantastic to work with the FDA. It's come a very long way, matter of fact. <laughs> uh, so from that standpoint, you know, what are we trying to do is not to talk too much about Sukino. Uh, by the way, Sukino, I came up with the word Sukino. In Sanskrit, it means joy, free of suffering. And my telehealth platform is called Saffron. And uh, to... Uh, 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 you know, Adrian's uh, uh, space, so to speak, my MLAI engine is called Ginger. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyways, so uh, what we're trying to do here is all my learnings that came in, I want to be very quick here. NASA led us to India in the 0304 time frame because that's when the trial was successful. NASA was very happy. They continue to be my champions. You know, I really look forward to continue to work with them. Uh, in some form or the other, and my project manager still works at NASA Cincinnati, Chuck. So uh, given that, India wanted to set up a nationwide telemedicine program. Where I'm coming from is they were not able to reach, you know, the unreached and the impoverished, so to speak. We were able to work with their astronautical society introduced by NASA in setting up a nationwide telemedicine network. And these are all very basic vitals. You know, proactive healthcare and wellness becomes very, very important, so to speak. That would be what I would like to share, given the fact that from a coverage standpoint, from a reimbursement standpoint, the cost of healthcare, you know, uh, there are other factors that need to come into play here to reduce the cost of healthcare delivery. And one of the things is supply demand, you know, time to access, cost to access so to speak. So, uh, you know, uh, we are able to today provide for uh, enabling the provider to observe and analyze physical examination remotely on demand at diagnostic level, you mm -hmm. know. So that but true using, you know, communication technologies, that is true blue. Uh, telemedicine or telehealth, so to speak, in an integrated. From a digital health standpoint, I think it makes a lot of difference. And how you set up an infrastructure, I think it is very important going forward in our country 
to optimize. You know, how do we draw the inflection between margin and volume becomes very, very essential. Good, good. Uh, thank you for that. Um, sure. The other, the other uh, speaker we have is Mike Moratti, uh, who is the co-founder and CEO of Sensulin, which is a biotechnology company focused on next generation insulin. He said that he was wanting to speak around in innovative aspects of healthcare and why cost containment is essential. Similar, you know, kind of playing on some of the themes that have already arisen. Uh, you know, to your point of fifteen thousand dollars per patient or per capita expenditure, and and how could private sector innovation affect, I think, the cost structure. Um, so, again, I don't want to hold anybody. I don't want to take more time. Oh, Mike Moratti wants the mic. So take, take the mic. I don't know how it does that. Hello. Yeah, and, and there he is. Sorry, yeah, and, and sorry for the uh, the uh, complexity here. I think I'm logged in on a different account than what I registered as. So. Maybe I need to resolve that before our actual conference. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I, I'm glad I saw that. I, I see your picture in here, and I was like, well, I don't see him. I don't know where he is. But, uh, but Mike, maybe, you know, I, I was thinking perhaps uh, you could go at the end. Um, I, I don't know. if Have you been able to follow the, the yeah, conversation yeah. so far? Okay. Yeah, and I mean, we're, we're sort of the, um, the favorite punching bag for uh, at least criticism uh, in the uh, at least the biotech uh, segment of healthcare, so uh, I recognize that we we may you know anger some people just with the cost of uh, you know going to the pharmacy these days. But yeah, certainly happy to at least talk through some of the challenges that you face as a small company, and of course you know, throw out some some good statistics that should help with understanding. Good. And Mike, I'll, Mike, I'll back you up because I uh, well, I agree we are a good punching bag on the big side of pharma, probably a better punching bag on the big side of pharma. Um, I think that um, oftentimes, uh, particularly in the world of drug pricing and more importantly, affordability, there are um, uh, either misstatements, misunderstandings, or selective um, data pick, uh, choices that people make to make the point they want to make. So we can, I'm sure we can have a, a, a robust conversation around that if, if folks want to go there. Yeah, exactly. I, I think, I think uh, a year and a half ago, pharma was a bigger punching bag than it is today because who was there when you needed it, right? Yeah, yeah it, it, it's, a, it's, yeah. So it does, doesn't mean that the, that the punching is done. I, I don't think we're that naive or, uh, no. or and, I, and I think there's a lot that needs to be done. And as, as many of the other speakers have said, the system is not working as it could or should. Um, I think it goes beyond Obamacare because Obamacare really only deals with a, a really a, a small portion of the U.S. healthcare system. It was not designed to redo the U.S. healthcare system in a lot of ways. So um, we, we can, we can yeah. get into that too. Yeah, yeah, no question. I mean, I think it's the, it's uh, yeah. This has been an interesting year. I think we've learned a lot from it, um, and I'm sure it'll play into our whole panel discussion. But as I was saying, thanks, Mike, for chiming in. Um, I, I didn't. I don't want to take more time with our our preview than with the session is supposed to take, you know, in a week's time or so. So I'll, I'll let everybody go. But I do appreciate your taking the time today to at least get to to know each other a little bit uh, as a first order. And um, what I'll, like I said, I'll follow up with what I kind of the talking points that I have and, and my proposed order uh, a sequence of, of speakers for next week. And if there are no other questions, I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Absolutely. Um, Gray, Thanks, three, three question. So for the next week's session, we would follow the same steps. We would come to this room, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I participated okay. as panelists last year in the same platform as this. And what you're going to see in the right hand panel is that questions will be typed in as or comments as the ses session is running. Um, but it'll it'll look very similar to what we're experiencing today. Okay, okay cool. Great. Well, thank you so much for your help. Okay. Well, have a good rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Take care.